Hunt 41 is a celebration of American waterfowl hunting. The 41 species of ducks and geese are the roadmap for us to tell the stories of the various regions, styles of hunting, and most importantly, the people that are representing this great pursuit of ours. This is the original series, The Chase for the 41. The common eider is the largest duck in the northern hemisphere. It weighs around four pounds, but can grow up to seven pounds. Eider plumage changes through the season. Their heads is especially beautiful, white in winter and striking black and white, with a little bit of light emerald green on its back and sides of its head during the breeding season. They make an unusual sound when they are feeding, an even stranger distress call. The eider can dive up to 65 feet when feeding off the ocean floor and reefs. They feed on all sorts of marine life from crabs, sea stars, sea urchins, and even mussels swallowing them whole and crushing the shells with their with their gizzard of all the sea ducks the common eider tied the closest to its marine habitat the common eider really isn't so common after all when compared with the rest of the amazing North American waterfowl species. guys, you can get one layout boat on the top of it, it hides real well. So we were actually going to take like a center console fishing boat, white, wow. that can haul the layout boats, but that cold and stuff, the plastic, everything breaks, it just doesn't stand up to the, to the elements. The cold just sucks it out. Yeah. yeah <laughs> How long have you been hunting out here? Uh, about 20 years. <laughs> yeah, give or take 20 years. You got it pretty figured out then. Still working on it. I learn a little bit every day. Every single day we do. The walls 
here, put one leg out here, and then the other one is 10 feet back in case of this one has to have a shooting lane. This one has a shooting lane, so is this one, because we don't want the inside layout shooting over top of the outside. Mm -hmm. So, and if we have to adjust it, we will. But it's low tide right now. Yeah, I, like the other week, I sat out there, let my boat just like this, and didn't even move. It was just like a amazing. Amazing. It's like glass out there now. Crap! Yeah, we got four. Is that yours, Ben? Is this yours? Right here. Yeah, that's banded. This one's banded. These are the two close ones. Well, the purpose of a party is to have fun together. And a successful party needs planning and skill. Choose your guests carefully. Plan invitations, plan for refreshments and entertainment. And while everyone finishes eating, a little more spontaneous, unplanned fun. And part of a good party is knowing when to go home, soon after refreshments have been served. And when you're invited to a party, Practice the skills of a good guest. Be on time, ready for fun. Take part in the party. Help everyone around you to have a good time. Thanking your host sincerely for the good time you've had. What do we want to do next time? Down to the bottom, swim around, get them. Is this a key? You have reached your destination.
What are we cooking here this morning, Kevin? Uh, some scrapple, pork roll, eggs, bacon. Scrapple, huh? Is that a is that a family favorite here? Uh, I don't know about family favorite, but it's a Pennsylvania Dutch yeah. regional food. Right on. It's a guy. I think I tried it once, but chili duck, but she won't try scrapple. <laughs> Just the name of it kind of turned yeah, me off of it. Yeah, it's a bit. I was I was joking with my kids. I said I spent your uh, your inheritance on duck hunting, so don't really expect much. I think drugs would be cheaper. Listen, hunting season really never ends for me. It might slow down, you know, in the heat of the summer, but I'm always doing something where I'm carving decoys or reading boats or reading blinds or building A-frames or there's just my days off are usually something to do. I I, I don't know what it is to wake up and not have something to do for a day. Since I started hunting, we've always hunted over my own birds, you know, or my dad's, or you know what I mean. Like you said, shoot stuff over your own decoys. Like I literally put my blood, sweat, and tears in the decoys. Like the one time I cut the tip of my finger off on that man saw over there. I tried to get my wife over there to glue, glue the finger back together. She did, but she didn't have it. She wanted to go to hospital. My wife started painting to fill the orders in. She got. Rooked into it. Back when I started hunting, all you had was uh, flambos and carry lights. If you wanted to think anything different, you had to go to a custom carver. For our own rig, we'd get a like, case of cork a year and just kind of work on it growing up. Just kind of making our own decoys and our own spread for ourselves. I'd say I've hunted all over from Bering Sea to Florida to Texas and it's by far the hardest conditions I mean the mud will just suck you up you know the tides you know we got an eight foot tide swing every six hours you know a lot of water comes in and out you know you get a variety I mean that's one good part but you need a lot of equipment to get that variety you know if you're gonna be out in the ocean sea duck hunting you ain't gonna go out in a sneak box you know what I mean you're gonna hunt salt marshes, you know what I mean? You're gonna need a sneak box, and you're gonna hunt fields, you're gonna need a field rig, you know, it all depends what you're gonna do. Pretty different, you know? It's just the amount of, within an hour. I mean, I do all that with, the furthest I drive from my house, about an hour and 15 minutes. I 
real job. I'm a cop by trade, but I work for the state park system, so I can work everywhere from the Statue of Liberty to Cape May Lighthouse. You know, it depends on my days and it depends on how far I want to travel. I'm normally assigned to the uh, Pine Barrens of New Jersey, where the supposed Jersey Devil lives. Pintail's my favorite duck, but I can't, I like shooting them all. I can't, anything is giving it up to the decoys, you know? I like just decoying birds. Any particular, you know? I'll go diver hunt, puddle duck, whatever. Whatever I can get onto, you know? Listen, I'm gonna drop you guys off that are shooting. I'm gonna stay in the boat so that we don't lose birds. Okay. I'm just gonna kinda stay out here and drift around in case they shoot anything. Sounds good. You know what I mean? New Jersey is only 45th in size among the continental states. It ranks 8th in population and 7th in the value of goods, added by manufacture. It's a top farming state also, being first in farm income per acre. Number one producer of chemical products. A leader in scientific research. Third in instruments and related products. Fourth in electrical machinery. Fifth in rubber products. Fifth in miscellaneous manufacturing. Sixth in stone, clay, and glass products. Sixth in petroleum and coal products. Yeah, I mean, I've been going since I was three years old. tobacco manufacturing. I mean, my daughter, she's been scouting me. She's a week old. Mom needed a break, and we went and looked for geese, you know? I couldn't sit in the house. Worst part about having a kid in the middle of winter when you're a duck hunter. <laughs> my daughter, she's carved. She carved that one on the, her shop. Well, I had to help her, you know, but going through, she carved and painted it, and I would do the outlines for her and let her paint, kind of fill in the blocks. She's painting it. So I'd throw out the doves in life size, and and I like the one thing I like about these is they're huge, but throw out a dozen in no time flat but if you get away from the rig and at a distance the thing you see here is these big old silhouettes you know we're hunting big water you know so you guys hunt a lot of silhouettes out on the great salt lake don't you?
someone got some shot. My buddies like to shoot them up, and <laughs> they're saying is they know a guy that can fix them. I can't say I have a favorite, you know. I kind of like them all. I don't really don't get rid of many, you know. Once I have them, they're pretty much here. You know, from back of the from the old market gunner days, you know, guys were carving decoys, and it's the tradition still carried along. There's a lot of guys I know around here that's what they do for a living is just carve decoys. You know, every day. I mean, there's true artists out there that carve decoys at three, four hundred dollars. I say I try to carve a custom decoy that the working guy can afford. The newer generation still kind of gets into plastic, but you know, guys have been hunting for 20 years, you know, plus they're still going over there. To work on it growing up, just kind of making our own decoys and our own spread for ourselves. Because um, it looks like it's going really fast. I call I. It's not his real name, but I call this one corn. My favorite part of it is the whole thing because it's really cool how it looks like he's walking on a big rock. It's my favorite part of it. It's a teal. And my favorite part about it is because um it's the, it's because of the tap. It's my favorite part of it is the tap.